Well, good afternoon. Today we're here to talk about Task Force Southern. And I'm here uh, joined today by Deputy Commissioner uh, Linda Williams. Unfortunately, there are three families who have had a family member's life cut short. Uh, th these lives have been cut short. Uh, coming into Christmas, what we're asking for is for closure for these families, for some dignity, uh, so that these people can begin the healing process. We're here today to announce that Cabinet has approved uh, a reward of up to $200,000 for each of the three unresolved murders. Unresolved murders being for Robert Atkins, Trevor King, and Jeff Mundy. So a total of up to $600,000 in, in total. These rewards are for any information leading to the successful conviction of those responsible for these murders. Uh, the rewards can also apply for information leading up to uh, the recovery of these bodies as well. Over its course and, and for governments beforehand, South Australian governments have uh, provided uh, over $30 million in rewards for over, uh, over 100 homicides all in all. We're asking anybody who knows anything to please come forward. As I said, these families, especially just before Christmas, they deserve some closure. They deserve some dignity. These people that have had their lives robbed, their lives cut short, uh, they are brothers, fathers, friends. The South Australia Police will be promoting these wards. The, the, the South Australia Police will be promoting these rewards through uh, the southern suburbs and also uh, the crime community as well. So one person could potentially get up to $600,000, being uh, three lots of up to $200,000. Um, these people, let's be clear, we know that these people have associated with some bad people. We know that these people have been caught up uh, with the wrong crowd. They have been caught up uh, with the illegal drug community. But you know what? These people did not deserve to die. They did not deserve to die and their families deserve to have some closure. So that's why we're appealing. We're appealing today. If anybody knows anything, please come forward. Please come forward. Uh, these rewards are... Uh, are ample, these rewards are generous. It's an opportunity for anyone that knows anything, especially if you're mixed up in that crowd. It's an opportunity for you to come forward. Uh, you can receive a reward for your information and it will then enable you to also make a fresh start as well. Please do call Crime Stoppers. Please speak to a, a task force Southern detective. Uh, the state government, let's be very clear, the, the cabinet has approved this reward. Uh, on uh, after request of South Australia Police, but the South Australian government was also the first government in our history to directly fund crime stops to the tune of over eight hundred thousand dollars over the Ford estimates. Because if we acknowledge that Crime Stoppers do an amazing job in in helping save, I'll be their eyes and ears to resolve these murders. I'll now hand over to Deputy Commissioner uh, uh, Linda, and uh, more than happy to take any questions. Thank you, Minister. Um, as the Minister said, this is a result of the formation of Task Force Southern that's investigating the, the tragic deaths of three men, Robert, Trevor and Jeff. And as you know, there possibly may be others. Um, on top of that, the Task Force is also re reviewing 201 drug overdose deaths from the 1st of July 2019 to identify if any of those deaths are also suspicious. And as you know, Trevor King uh, was given a lethal dose of illegal drugs and he was found in the waters of West Lakes. Um, it's important to, to note that uh, Task Force Southern aren't investigating a serial killer, but they're investigating multiple offenders. Um, Task Force Southern comprises of 42 officers, uh, led from major crime investigation branch with various departments from other areas within SAPOL, such as the magnitude of this investigation that the Task Force was formed. Um, we believe the offenders and victims are all associated with the Met scene down in the southern suburbs, and overall, we are looking at the role of up to 15 people in those three deaths. Uh, we know that the offenders, um, as the Minister has alluded to, are involved in low-level drug dealing and in the meth scene, and we know that their tactics are to bully and to threaten their victims in a variety of, of unimaginable ways to a normal person in society. What we need now, and what the families, more importantly, of these three men need, is anyone who has information to come forward to try help us to understand and resolve the deaths of Robert Atkins, Trevor King and Jeff Mundy. And we urge people to call Crime Stoppers on 1800 333 000. It's really important here to emphasise 
These were people that walked and lived in our community and they should still be doing that today, but for what has occurred to them. And we are keen to help families understand what did actually happen to their loved ones because they have a right to know. And furthermore, the people who did this have a right to be held to account and shouldn't be actually out in our society. So if anyone has any information, please come forward and help the families understand what happened. If you're fearful about providing information, we can reassure you that by using the venue of Crime Stoppers, you can, if you wish, remain anonymous, but we will assist you if you have any fears in speaking out. I emphasise that we're here to help you because we're here to help the families. Please, if you want to, call tonight. Detectives from Task Force Southern are available at Crime Stoppers. They'll personally take your call. They'll be there from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. This is really important. It's your opportunity, and it will be there beyond that time. But if you really feel you need to speak to one of those detectives, they'll take the time to talk to you personally. We urge you to come forward. To date, we have received over 33 calls to Crime Stoppers. They have been, people have been providing valuable information. This is really important. That information will be used by Task Force Southern to assist in resolving the deaths of these three men and to help their families understand what happened to them and hold the people responsible accountable. Of those 201 <coughs> cases that you're looking at now, uh, do any, and if so, how many appear suspicious out of those? It's still early days to tell, so they're all being assessed. And um, to date, um, we, have, we haven't located any that we have identified, but as I say, it's a very big task. It will be arduous for the task force to undertake, and the results won't be immediate, but each case will receive equal attention. Will, there, will we see more than 201 people, or do you feel you've, you've sort of cancelled? No, I think we're confident that that's the number that we'll be looking at from the period of 1 July 2019. Um, of course, we are always open to go further back if information means that we should, but today that's the time frame. And are they all in the southern suburbs? Is that, or are they, do they range around? Um, they're all in the metropolitan area of Adelaide. We spoke about um, 200,000 or up to 200,000 for each of these murders, but will there be any money on offer for any other murders that major crime might not have identified yet? We'll assess, we'll assess that as information comes forward. If that proves to be the case and it proves to be something we think would be required, uh, we will go back to Cabinet and we might seek their approval and then that would be made public. So I'm open to that, but at this point there's no information to indicate it's necessary. The fact that you're looking at potential sort of, you talk about drug syndicate sort of operations, um, is it, you're not just dealing with money to their conscience, but also in those circles, grief. Well, look, we'll appeal to people to come forward. Firstly, I like to think that people will come forward because it's the right thing to do. But if the motivation for some people, and I understand this, is to get out of a bad way of life and then assist them to do that, and um, that is motivation that, that, it, that will help them to move on and move forward. And that's, that's perfectly fine. Because some of these people just have made bad choices and they don't know how to get out of it and they don't see a way. This may be the way that they can do that. If there's anyone that's involved but um, not directly in the deaths of these people, would they be offered immunity? Now, we always look on a case by case in regards to immunity, and yes, you're correct, we will, we will look at that. If that's of a concern to a person, we will assess it. If we won't uh, rule it out, we very much rule it in to have the discussion. We know that there are up to 15 people involved in these killings. Do you now think that they might be looking at each other, thinking, is one of them going to take this money? Is one going to go on the other sort of situation? I'm sure it'll be a human instinct to, to be questioning whether then they should be the first person to come forward. Um, that, that'll be the things that might motivate people um, and it, it would be something I'm sure that they, they may be considering. Have you put this forward thinking that maybe they might break, which might encourage them to break? No, clearly the motivation here is actually to solve the deaths of these three men. It's to understand for the families what happened and it's to hold the people accountable who did that. Can you re reiterate how dangerous these people are that you're looking at and why it's so important that they're, they're arrested and put behind us? Um, these people, you've, you've heard before, I think, they, um, their methodology is particularly brutal. They appear to know very little bounds in terms of the suffering that they're willing to inflict. Um, and it's, it's, it's apparently over very small amounts of money that seem to, in their mind, then escal escalate very quickly. Um, and the fact that we are dealing with three deaths in itself indicates the level of, of no conscience that these people have. Um, there's one 
extent that we've brought to seven communities of attention from the family and family of John Bowen who died of an overdose. Um, is that, is there then a better part of the tumor than the one? I have, I've put particular names um, that I can provide in relation to, to the people who we're looking at. Um, but if the family want to make that request outside of the media conference, I'm happy for, to, to follow it up. How long would it take to, you know, families that are out there waiting, you've got 201 you're looking at, it will be months before families might know whether they're, there's a suspected suicide. Um, it it may be a period of time. I wouldn't like to quantify. I mean, we're, as, as you know, we've got a significant amount of people onto task force summit, um, and we take it very seriously. Um, our aim is, as soon as is reasonably possible, we would like to reassure people and what the outcome is, and it is a priority. But to put a time frame on it would be difficult. And just again, for the, these, these people are, are loved by many. Definitely loved by many. But amongst this group, we have sons, we have fathers, we have brothers, we have we have mates. They were known in their community. They had connections, and, and you know, one day they're there, the next day they're gone, and people don't know why. Um, but they hear us saying that it wasn't, it's not good. What happened wasn't good, and it wasn't nice. And they want to know who, why, where, when. Yeah, it is reasonable that people should have answers, and that's why we're offering the rewards. It's actually for the families. And some of them have children themselves. Absolutely, their fathers in their own right. And two of them you say like have a body call. How important is it to you know reunite that with their family? It's terribly important that the, the two men that we, we don't even know where they you know, where they are, that we would like to be able to give that reassurance to their family and bring back bring them back at least so their families can afford them a proper proper burial, send off, whatever it is to that that's important to that family is critically important for them to know and have that, that sense of understanding. How helpful has the, the C three forms been um, since we've met you made a public appeal dropped in last week or so? Um, has there been any has the company anything come to fruition from those calls? Had this been without going into the information because it's important it's still an operational investigation, the information has been helpful. Um, and that's why we're encouraging people to keep talking to us. Thank you. And sorry, just one more, not in relation to this, but currently there's a staging point in Kensington, although an unexplained death. Do you have any information on that if you disagree? Um, I just know the police attended an address at Kensington Park about before 12.30 today um, in regards to a, a body that's been located. Um, it is an unexplained death at this time. Um, forensic response that there and the pathologists to try and have an understanding of, of cause of death. Um, until that information is known, we wouldn't be able to make a 